The reporting of police corruption in California has existed ever since the first police department was formed in 1849 in Sacramento. In the past 30 years alone, every year in California, an average of 82 police officers have been arrested. Their crimes range from aggravated assault to drug dealing and armed robbery to murder. But out of all the dirty cops in California's history, these cops top the list. Lee Baca began his Los Angeles police career in 1965. He then went on to run the nation's largest sheriff's department for more than 15 years. During that time, Baca was accused of placing friends on the payroll and taking gifts in exchange for releasing inmates from L.A. County Jail. But although these accusations swirled around him during his career, he was never charged with any crimes. That was until 2016, when a federal grand jury charged him on a three-count indictment. One of the charges included obstructing an FBI investigation into the prisoner abuse that was occurring inside county jails. In 2017, Lee Baca was found guilty for making false statements to a federal investigator, obstruction of justice, and conspiracy to obstruct justice. He was sentenced to three years. Kenneth Collins was a self-proclaimed sheriff who made problems go away for drug dealers. He used his position in law enforcement to help drug traffickers transport large amounts of cocaine, methamphetamine, and marijuana across state lines. For years, Collins worked with drug traffickers, promising them that his position as a deputy ensured their drugs an extra level of protection from legitimate law enforcement officials. In exchange for his security services, Collins charged as much as $250,000. Kenneth Collins' downfall came in 2017 when he made an arrangement with an undercover FBI agent to transport nearly 45 pounds of cocaine and 13 pounds of methamphetamine from L.A. to Las Vegas. He was recorded on tape telling the undercover agent, we're cops and all our transports make it through. Kenneth Collins pleaded guilty to a charge of conspiracy to distribute drugs and was sentenced to 17 years in federal prison. James Two Guns Davis served as the chief of the Los Angeles Police Department from 1926 to 1929 and from 1933 to 1939. During his term as chief, Davis transformed the LAPD into a training facility where police recruits trained in an armory and learned how to be firearm experts. Davis then created what he called a gun squad, staffed with 50 policemen. He announced that the LAPD gun squad would hold court on all criminals in Los Angeles. Davis declared that he wanted all the gun-toting element and rum smugglers brought in dead, not alive, and would reprimand any officer who showed the least amount of mercy to a criminal. No charges were ever brought against James Two Guns, but he was eventually forced out of office in 1939. Ruben Palomares was a former Golden Gloves boxer who joined the LAPD in 1993, serving in the Ramparts Crash Task Force. Law officials claim that from 1999 to 2001, Palomares participated in more than 40 phony raids throughout Los Angeles. Palomares formed a group that included police officers, civilians, friends, and family to assist in the raids. During the course of his corruption, investigators claim Palomares provided friends and family with official LAPD badges, uniforms, radios, firearms, and LAPD vehicles. Together, the group staged robberies and fake raids at homes Palomares knew to be drug houses. The group would arrive at the house and claim to be on official police business. Once inside the residence, they'd often handcuff the victims while they searched the house, taking anything of value. After a four and a half year investigation into Ruben Palomares and his gang, 19 defendants were indicted for participating in the robberies. 
Ruben Palomares pled guilty and cooperated with police, testifying against his co-conspirators, and was sentenced to 13 years. Rafael Perez became an LAPD officer in the late 1980s. In 1995, he was assigned to the Ramparts Crash Task Force, an anti-gang unit formed in Los Angeles. Within a year, Perez began on his path to corruption, stealing drug money and dealing pounds of cocaine. Perez was involved in numerous crimes, but most notably was his involvement in the shooting and framing of gang member Javier Ovando, who was paralyzed in the incident. Perez's downfall came after he was caught by a fellow officer stealing three kilos of cocaine from the evidence room. Arrested and facing the prospect of 12 years in prison, Perez cut a deal. And over the course of 35 interviews, he unwound a story of widespread police misconduct. By the time Perez was finished, four more officers were arrested and 70 cops were put under investigation. In 2001, Perez was released from prison after serving three years of a five-year sentence. Later that same year, Perez pleaded guilty to the charges resulting from the shooting of Javier Ovando and was sentenced to five years in federal prison. After serving two, he was released and placed on parole. Henry Hubbard Jr. graduated in 1987, first in his class at the San Diego, California Police Academy. Years later, while working as an officer, He'd been assigned to patrol the nearby beaches and investigate a series of sexual attacks and robberies along Torrey Pine State Beach. For years, these attacks went unsolved, and detectives grew frustrated as the rapists seemed to anticipate their every move. That was until Charisma Carpenter, an up-and-coming actress known for her role in the 90s show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, became one of Hubbard's victims. Charisma and two male friends were at the beach for an early morning swim when Henry Hubbard attacked him. Charisma refused Hubbard's demands to tie up her friends, and a struggle ensued. Hubbard then shot both of her friends, seriously wounding them. After his attack, Hubbard fled the scene, leaving behind his police-issued flashlight that was engraved with his name. DNA evidence along with his flashlight, linked Hubbard to all seven attacks for which he was charged. In 1992, Henry Hubbard pleaded no contest to 38 counts of rape, robbery, kidnapping, and attempted murder. He was sentenced to 56 years in prison. William Leisure was a traffic cop for 17 years. His nickname was Mild Bill because of his easygoing demeanor. Yet from 1976 to 1986, prosecutors claim William Leisure committed theft, fraud, and murder for hire. Dennis France, an admitted hired killer, testified that he murdered three people on orders from the veteran officer William Leisure. Dennis France said Leisure paid him $3,500 for one murder and $1,000 for each of the two murders after. William Leisure was arrested in 1986. Four years later, he accepted a plea bargain agreement and was charged with two counts of second-degree murder. He received 15 years to life. James Nichols and Luis Valenzuela were veterans of the Los Angeles Police Department, both with the police force for over 15 years. In 2008, the partners were assigned to the LAPD's Hollywood Division. Not long after, they began using their position of authority to prey on vulnerable women. An undercover investigation showed Nichols and Valenzuela sexually attacked four women between 2008 and 2011. In some cases, one of the officers would stand guard while the other assaulted a woman. The two men were arrested in 2016 both pleaded no contest to two counts of forcible rape and each received a 25-year prison sentence. Craig Payer was a 13-year veteran with the California Highway Patrol. 
On the evening of December 27, 1986, Payer was on duty patrolling the I-15 freeway in San Diego County. That night, he was seen pulling over and harassing several female drivers. One of those women was 20-year-old Kara Knott. Craig Payer pulled up behind Kara in a CHP patrol car and directed her to pull off the highway and step out of the car. He walked up to her and hit her with a flashlight, knocking her down. He then got a rope from the trunk of his car and strangled her to death, then threw her body off the side of a bridge. He was arrested weeks later, and two years after, in 1988, he was convicted and sentenced to 25 years to life. Stephanie Lazarus worked for the Los Angeles Police Department for 26 years, first as a police officer, then as a detective. That was until 2009, when a cold case from 1986 was reopened. The case involved a woman named Sherry Rasmussen, who was beaten and shot three times in her home in Van Nuys, California. Detectives in 1986 believed the murder to be a burglary gone bad, but Sherry Rasmussen's father always said differently. He believed the killer was Officer Stephanie Lazarus, who was the jealous ex-girlfriend of Sherry's husband. But at the time, there was no evidence that could link Lazarus to the crime. But in 2009, cold case detectives were able to link Officer Stephanie Lazarus's DNA to evidence from a bite mark that was left on Sherry Rasmussen's body. In 2012, Stephanie Lazarus was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to 27 years to life. A Vietnam vet, Joseph James D'Angelo became a police officer in 1973 and worked in the Northern California communities of Exeter and Auburn. In 1976, a series of crimes including burglaries, rapes, and murders terrorized the cities where D'Angelo patrolled. The man responsible for these crimes could never be identified and was only known as the Golden State Killer. These attacks continued on for more than 10 years, and every case remained unsolved. As the crime spree continued, Joseph D'Angelo remained on the police force and helped fellow officers with the investigations. It wasn't until 40 years later that the truth came out. In 2018, Joseph D'Angelo was arrested for being the Golden State Killer. After cold case investigators took DNA evidence left behind at the scenes, and matched it to D'Angelo. Joseph D'Angelo was charged with 13 counts of murder, but is accused of over 50 rapes and over 120 burglaries. In 2012, the 74-year-old was sentenced to 12 consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole, plus eight years. <laughs>